Okay, you guys, welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. Thank you for joining me. And for anybody who's trying to learn how to become a barber, want to learn how to do what we do, and advance your skill set, this is the channel for you. So click that subscribe button and click that thumbs up if you like this video, if it helps you out with something. Um, today's model is, is some kind of challenging hair. It's, it's curly and it's fine and it presents a couple different challenges. So we're going to go about this one similar to others, but a little bit different. So let's just dive into it. I'll give you guys my thoughts, how I completed this and how I came up with this result. So let's get it started. We're just going to begin by combing this thing out, getting all his hair, kind of feel out his hair, comb it all out, make sure that you, you get a feel for what's going on in there. Look for any little bald spots or anything like that, or any light areas. And we'll go through, we'll just put our skin line in. And after I'm done with putting the skin line in, I'm going to use the tool that makes the most sense. The Slimline Pro is good to get around the ears. And the back, I'm going to use the, the Oster Volts. So this is kind of one of those haircuts that I do actually like to do a little flipping. You know, I tell you guys all the time to be careful with the flipping, but when, when I'm talking about kind of keeping like a loose wrist and sort of letting the clipper do the work, beginning that next step as you begin to flick out, and then we'll, we'll begin the same, the same process. So we have the, the five zero line, which right here, I'll just put the five zero line, okay? And now we have the open taper, but because of the fact that I kind of flipped out, that's, that's what I want to make sure that I maintain that same distance. Let's say that this is, let's say this is a half inch. I maintain this whole distance around the whole head. So I really like to do this on both sides of the head. A lot of you guys ask me if, if I, if I actually work one side of the head and then skip to the other. No, I, I don't. I usually work my way all the way around the head. There's certain things I do when I'm filming that just make it a little bit easier. But other than that, you know, I actually will work this around the whole head. So let's make sure that we maintain this distance between our five zero and our open taper. I just want to work that all the way around. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving myself a nice area to work with. Now, down below the five zero line, we're going to go down to skin. It wasn't my best, wasn't my best writing. We're going to go down to skin. Still not my best writing, but it'll have to do. So anyways, as we approach that five zero line, we want to begin flicking out, reducing tension, making things a little bit easier, coming into that line carefully. And this way we don't wind up with a harsh line. We don't want to run it directly into that. We want to make sure that we begin moving out as we got close to it. And the best thing you could do for yourself is to have no line in between skin and five zero. And then we can jump back to the open taper. So I'm going to begin by closing my lever slightly and bringing it up very close to where I went with the end of that line and moving it on an angle back and forth, just using the corner of the blade and little by little, I'll close that lever some more. I'll come down a little bit lower and you're going to see that this, this line starts to, starts to fade out. <clears throat> now this is a really easy way. Uh, to take care of this line. It's a really good foundation to follow these steps, to work your way up carefully, and to, to make sure that you're not you know, jumping too far ahead of yourself. What's nice about this is you need to see a very smooth fade from skin to the open taper. So the very next step that we're going to be doing, we're going to be putting on that number one. Because this hair is so fine, I wanted to kind of see what reaction a number one would have. So I've actually skipped a step. So let's, let's go back and see what this looks like because I'm really in good shape. I'm really in good shape from skin to my open taper, right? And then I jumped a step, which is the zero or the one sixteenth or considered the half guard. I skipped that step and I went to the number one. So if anybody's not following me here, if anybody's not following me here, the reason why I did this, I'll show you guys one more time. Okay, one, um, we'll, we'll say 1.5, one open, one closed, half, 
open, half closed, open, closed, trimmer, skinner. Okay, so this is your progression and I just jumped. So we were good from here to here and I just jumped over this half guard step. So now I'm gonna have to go back with the half and I'm gonna have to clean that up afterwards, but I'm gonna get in there with some clipper over comb and I'm going to try to do my best to blend out some of those curls. Now, like I said, this can be kind of challenging. Sometimes these curls cooperate and the fade comes out perfect, but every time a person washes their hair and it dries differently, sometimes the curls can lay differently. So even after just a couple days, um, the curl could be laying a whole different way than it was the day that you were working on it. So um, this is kind of why I like to use clip rubber comb in these situations because I can kind of go right to those areas that are bothering me, right to those areas that are not looking perfect, and I can try my best to, to just clean them out. And in this type of clip rubber comb, it's actually pretty easy because all I got to do is tip it out far enough and hold it there and just kind of work it alongside the comb. There doesn't have to be so much cutting and lifting um, like we do in other times. And make sure that you leave yourself enough hair to be able to fix up with the thinning shears because the thinning shears with this haircut is going to be your friend, okay? And what those do is, is those cut only some of the hair, leaving other hair long, and they texturize the hair, which, which means to remove bulk without affecting length, which also means that some of those curls, like the ones that are kind of you know, causing dark spots can be used, the freehand technique can be used to just go in there and kind of eliminate that and get that looking really smooth. Now, on the other side of the head, I'm going back to it. So, <clears throat> what I didn't cover, what I didn't cover was we, we jumped the half guard, but then I went back to the half guard and I worked the half guard out. So no matter what happens, we will follow this whole fade scale at some point. Now, all barbers will follow this fade scale at some point because this is really helpful in making sure that everything's lined up to each other. So as long as your clippers are set up correctly, this is, this is going to work a lot better. So your electric shaver and your trimmers are very close to each other in length. It's a very small jump, so it's very easy to blend that. So when we, when we zero gap our trimmers, when we zero gap our trimmers, we're going to make it so that that gap is, is smaller between this machine and my trimmers. Now the next step up is that closed taper. The closed taper means that that blade, that blade that you have on your clipper, needs to be zero gap so that it balances well with your trimmer. So all three of those are going to work together really nicely. And then you get into your plastic guards. Um, again, in this case, we're, we're skipping the half and we're back to the one open and we'll work the one closed. Then we can go back to the half open, half closed because we want to try to keep as much darkness that we, that we can in the hair. We can see a really smooth transition and you know, some people's hair is, it's obviously a little bit more dense on this left side than it is on the right side. Um, so we're going to do our best with the clipper over comb to try to accommodate that, to try to make it look as uniform as possible, make it look as perfect as possible. I'm going to go in and I'm going to start eliminating some of them curls. And of course on this one, we're, we're also going to use detexturizing shears. So every barber that you'll ever see work will use some kind of combination of these steps. There's a lot of great barbers out there who choose to go, you know, all up from the top to the bottom. There's barbers who like to mix it up. And, you know, now you see me going in with the half guard. I'm going to do some fine tuning. Um, this, is, this is one of my favorite ways to work, especially when, like, we're dealing with a, a, a type of hair that can be difficult, a type of hair that you might cut and not get some of it back, and you might wind up, you know, making a mistake. I like to be um, exercising an abundance of caution in these situations. It's different if this kid's hair was super, super thick and we knew that there was a lot of hair in there and I knew that it would, it would transition perfectly and look perfect. You know, obviously not every, can, not every canvas is gonna be easy. So that's kind of why I like working with this kid's hair because it, it is a little bit challenging. It makes me think and it makes me, makes me work a little bit harder just to get it, you know, get it to be that perfect. So as you can see, the blend is starting to shape up. We're gonna have to shape up the top. And that's something that I've covered on the channel before, but I'm actually kind of happy to, to be covering this again on the channel um, because a lot of people ask me how to shape up this really curly hair, right? So let's just say that this is the top of his hair and I want it to obviously be, you know, I want it to obviously be even. 
when I clean that up, when I go back through, when I shape it all up. And the way that I'm going to do that is not with a clipper guard, um, not with anything like that. In cases, I can use a clipper guard, but I'm actually going to use some freehand clipper cutting to get that done. And you're going to see the way that I hold the clipper, and I'm going to, I'm going to work that out. Yo, go. Turn that down for a second, I'm sorry. All right, so I'm going in there, I'm taking care of the edge, and, and I'm just kind of cleaning that little bit up. And then we're gonna we're gonna get up to the to the top here. And a little bit of a taper comb is, is a really helpful thing to use in this in this process. A taper comb is really gonna help you to to get those little fine details out that you know you, you may or you may not have uh, noticed. But the taper comb is very very thin on the one side, and when you get right down to it, you're gonna be able to to, to be more precise with, with what you're doing. So. Okay, I got the top, and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna comb it out. You wanna get this hair sticking out as, as best as you can, and you wanna decide how much you're gonna eliminate. So I'm just, I'm just trying to hold it as, as still as possible, and I'm beginning in the middle, and I'm gonna work my way down to one edge, and I'll work my way off to the other edge. Now, you do need a steady hand if you wanna do this um, in this way. If, if I was feeling a little less confident, I, I might want to opt to go with a, a clipper guard or something, but I really like using the 5-0 because the nice thing about using the 5-0, which is the same length as your trimmers, but it's on a detachable blade. The nice thing about using the 5-0 is the fact that it will eliminate the hair that it touches right as you see it. Now, if I had a guard, you know, a, a barrier in between this and the clipper, then I gotta kind of guess what that distance is and I can't be 100% precise. And this is just me, a personal thing. A lot of people like to do this with an open taper or they like to do it with things that are a little bit more forgiving. I really like doing it with the 5-0 because like if I'm looking at a, a piece of hair that I need to get perfect, I wanna make sure that I'm able to see exactly how it's coming out. So things that you can do to help would be getting your eyes, getting your eye line, kind of in, in line with, with what you're working on. So, you know, I'm trying to get down. I want my eyes to be viewing him from different angles. And another thing that is kind of hard to capture on camera is, is I actually take their head and I position it around. So I might tip their head this way to make sure that I got all that good, this way to make sure I got all that good. And I'll, I'll move their head around in many different ways so that I make sure that I get it from all angles. And then, unfortunately, because the hair's curly, because it's always going to be different we're going to comb it out one more time and we're going to go back through and do it again now after i've combed this out and cut it twice i can be relatively confident that that this client is is going to get an actual an actual good smooth cut all the way around confident and I like and I like what I see and I've directed his hair every which way um, the next step the next step that we're going to use we're going to actually use a pair of shears Okay, so the trick with the scissors and the way that you can avoid making mistakes until you get more confident is use the inside of the shear. Use the part of the shear that's actually the sharpest, the least amount to get used. A nice long seven inch pair of shears is gonna do the job just fine. And you can kind of sort of just open it and close it. Notice how I'm only moving my thumb. Um, that's a good technique to use with clipper over comb too. And it also helps you stop from cutting yourself and things like that um, when you're using it otherwise. But I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna hold it with my finger, move it up and down, get that cut, get all them little hairs that are sticking up, really fine tune it, and we're gonna be able to get into the edge up um, fairly soon once I have it all clean. I got a nice good background on him, I can actually see what I'm working with, and I'm gonna begin his edge up from the middle and work my way out to the edges. And once I've done that, his hair is really gonna to start to pop, his lineup is really gonna to start to pop, 
and the nice contrast of the fade, everything is coming together and it's, it's going to create a, a really nice, you know, a really nice blend, really nice look. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of fibers in his edge. He's got a couple light spots in there and I just wanted to show you guys, you know, that, that people do this all the time. You'll see this on every perfect picture on Instagram. You're going to see that people are going to be doing a lot of fibers, a lot of cleanup. So I'll just go through with the straight razor because after I do the fiber, I'm only going to use the trimmers because if you try to use a straight razor, it's going to cause it to clump and you know, that ain't no good for nobody. So once I've gone through and I've gotten the edge, you know, fairly straight, fairly perfect, I've done all the straight razor work that I want to do. I can go back through and I can, I can put in the enhancements and we'll make sure that we get, you know, his, his hair looking perfect. So I'm just using a little card here. I'm just spraying it in and we're going to get one, one thing I, I mentioned uh, before I forgot to mention is I, I sprayed a little bit of hairspray on his, on his hair before I put it in. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put it in. We're going to edge it up one more time with the trimmers just to make it look perfect. And once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock it back in with the hairspray again so that it doesn't just blow out the second he walks out. But this is going to allow me to get some really nice pictures of his haircut that I can use for the thumbnail, hopefully, or some really nice pictures that I can use to advertise myself in, in the future. So just going that extra mile when you know you should. And if you see any last minute adjustments, I'm just going to touch them up. And really, other than that, I mean, this is kind of how I handled this one. So if you guys have any questions or anything that I'm not explaining well or anything that you would like to learn in the future, um, please give me some video ideas. Drop them in the comments. I'll be glad to, to check them out. I've been getting like a crazy amount of comments lately, and I want to comment back to all you guys, but I just can't. But I do read them, I swear. I, I read all of them. I try to like all of them. And uh, I definitely try to show some love um, to you guys whenever I get a chance. Also, I want to say... Uh, a shout out to the guy who, who won the gold FX's. He just sent me a video of him, him using them. I'm going to put him up right here. So, you know, shout out to him. And you guys know that we're going to be dropping a giveaway right now, right? Yeah, so this is the announcement. Giveaway this video. Hit the link down below. That'll have all the contest rules. And you're going to have a chance to win this detachable clipper. So, other than that, man, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a little thumbs up. That really helps the channel grow. If you're interested in barbering, please just click that subscribe button. It's Mr. Eddie Barber. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'll see you guys in another video.